Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 12th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. This morning was kind of warm and foggy with light drizzly rain and light winds, which was fine for me because I stayed up late last night and was late getting out this morning. If you want to hear that whole story, stick around till the end of the video. I did have one Merlin at the North Lookout before a northerly wind kicked in, so around 10.30 I moved down to the South Lookout, and the morning was pretty lousy overall with very foggy conditions and some more drizzly rain and light to moderate northerly winds, and actually as the day went on it cleared up kind of nicely, and by the afternoon we could see the texture in the clouds, which is always a good sign and we ended up getting a fairly decent flight of raptors. It brightened up and there were even a few moments of blue sky. So it turned into a much better day than we expected given the conditions in the morning. One highlight in that morning fog was four Vesper Sparrows at the South Lookout parking area. And remember, Vesper Sparrows are one of the stripy sparrows, so overall they kind of resemble a song sparrow, but the most distinctive thing about them is the white eye ring. Here's a flock of galls, either ring-billed or herring galls, that are flying in a V formation, which I always get a kick out of for some reason. I had a group of around 50 turkey vultures get up and migrate past in the morning fog, so they must have been roosting somewhere nearby. Here we have a hawk, and looking at the overall shape with that medium-length tail, this is a buteo. We see a dark belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk, and we see the dark trailing edge to the wings, which indicates it's an adult, and you can't really see their color in this photo just because of the foggy conditions. In the afternoon, as it brightened up, we started to get more groups of turkey vultures that were passing fairly low, and there were other species mixed in, such as red tails, and then I spotted this hawk mixed in just after 2 p.m., and as it turns and gives us the nice silhouette, we see that this is a buteo, but this bird has very long, skinny, pointed wings. And looking at the overall plumage, it doesn't have that black and white plumage we would see on something like a rough-legged hawk. But we can see this bird is kind of two-toned. It almost has a light front leading edge to the wings and then darker flight feathers to the wings. And that is because this is the season's first Swainson's hawk. Swainson's hawk is mainly found in the western USA, but small numbers do migrate through New York every spring, and Derby Hill usually gets at least one. Some seasons we don't get any at all, and some seasons we get a few. So hopefully this isn't our only one for the season, but it was nice to get it on the list today. And again, the photos didn't come out very good because of the lighting, but the shape is the most distinctive thing about the species. And also they have a bit of a bib to them as well. Um, but that long, skinny, pointed wings and the dark flight feathers to the wings are the main field marks you want to look for. And when Swainson's hawks glide, they droop their wings a bit, so when they're coming in at you, they almost look like a miniature osprey. Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk, and this one has a nice big dark belly band, and this is probably from the northern Abieticola subspecies. Here we have a large lanky black and white raptor with a dark line through the eye. This is an osprey. Here we have a water bird with a dark head, and with all of the common loons we've been seeing, you might at first assume this would just be another loon, but actually looking at the silhouette of this bird, we see that the feet do not stick out past the tail. So this is not a loon, but rather this is a duck, and we can see some dark here to the upper breast because this is a male red-breasted merganser. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk, and this one's a more typical eastern or borealis red tail. It was pretty steady up until around 4 o'clock with groups of turkey vultures coming by, and we were lucky with that Swainson's hawk that those groups were pretty close out in front of us, because after that the flight seemed to split with some going closer to the lake shore and some going further inland. A visitor who had been there for the whole flight said to me, Do you think it's strange that we haven't seen a bald eagle yet today? And it wasn't a minute or two later that we had our first bald eagle of the day, this nice juvenile who happens to be missing a feather or two in the wingtip. And not too long after that, we had an adult bald eagle as well, although this one didn't seem to migrate. Today from the South Lookout, I had 45 species. The only new species for the season was Swainson's hawk, bringing us to a total of 116 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 431 turkey vultures, 4 ospreys, 1 bald eagle, 18 northern harriers, 12 sharp-shinned hawks, and 2 cooper's hawks. We had 13 red-tailed hawks, 
We had six American Kestrels and two Merlins, and we had our one Swainson's Hawk for a total of 490 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 8,122 and the season total to 26,425. Okay, it's time for the story of why I was up late last night, and maybe from this photo you can sort of guess what happened. I was in bed, it was around 11.30, just getting ready to fall asleep, and I heard the sound of a car somewhere outside, and it, it was either the sound of an engine or like deep bass from music. Something just caught my attention, and I figured it was one of the neighbors who live farther down the road, because some of them have loud cars and sometimes play music as they go by, but... It caught my attention enough, I decided to get out of bed and look out the window just to make sure everything was okay. And everything wasn't okay because when I looked out the window, there was a car stuck in the grass right where we stand to do the hawk watch. And the car was spinning its tires and obviously not going to move anywhere. So I was like, well, what do I do now? You know, I'm in my pajamas and... So I kind of watched out the window and uh, I could tell it was a, a man and a woman, younger couple. and. You know, they got out, they kind of assessed the situation and um, got back in the car, tried again, tried pushing the car and nothing was working. So eventually I got dressed and I went out and helped them. And, uh, you know, by shoveling some rocks underneath the tires, we were able to get the car unstuck with between the tires and lots of pushing the car finally got unstuck and they went on their way. But by then it was after 1 a.m. And by the time I fell asleep, it was after two. So yeah, kind of a late night and something I didn't really want to have to deal with. Um, but anyway, it worked out kind of well that it was a slow morning today because I think if today was going to be a good day and I needed lots of sleep, I may have just gone back to bed and said, they can deal with it themselves, not my problem. But I was kind of lucky that I did help them because I think it gave me some good karma to get that Swainson's Hawk today. At least that's what I'm going to tell myself. But anyway, when I got back to the North Lookout uh, after the Hawk Watch today, I put the sign up. So hopefully no one else tries to drive into the grass because with all the rain we've had lately, um, well, you can see they didn't make it more than 10 or 15 feet before they got stuck. So don't try parking in the grass on these good days coming up. If the main parking lot is full up top, park in the secondary lot down below on Sage Creek Drive. Hopefully we don't have any more unwanted visitors in the night. Derby Hill is open to the public for certain activities during daylight hours, but we don't want people coming in here after dark. Although I know the people watching these videos aren't the ones planning on sneaking in for nefarious activities in the night. This whole situation reminds me of the years that I lived on site at the Ashland Hawk Watch and was kind of the eyes and ears of that property at night. And we would put a chain up across the entranceway, but sometimes cars would pull in, they'd take the chain down and pull into the parking lot. But what I'd always do is I wouldn't go out and confront them. I would just sneak out and put the chain back up. So they'd be there doing who knows what, and uh, they wouldn't have seen any people, no other cars. It was just a quiet night, but they'd go to leave and that chain would mysteriously be back up. I always thought it was really funny and I don't know what their reaction was, but I'm sure seeing the, the chain up and then having to get out of their car into the darkness to take it down so they could drive out was probably something that scared them a little bit and hopefully enough so that they wouldn't come back and do it again because, hey, if the chain's up, that means you shouldn't come in. And when I was updating the totals board this evening, I looked over on this board where we had written some of our better sightings like Crider's Red-Tailed Hawk and Eurasian Greenwing Teal and Northern Shrike. And I saw that someone had crossed out the lesser of our lesser Sandhill Crane. They must not have believed that we had a lesser Sandhill Crane, but indeed we did have one. So I'm going to have to cross out their cross out and write lesser again. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it'll be partly cloudy with a high near 50 and northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it will be another day at the south lookout. And hey, we had a pretty good flight this afternoon on similar winds. So hopefully we'll get a steady flight again tomorrow with a good push of turkey vultures and smaller numbers of other species mixed in. With the sunshine tomorrow, maybe the birds will get up higher than they were today. Um, today was kind of a gloomy day. It was hard for the birds to get any lift at all. But we'll look forward to at least getting a half-decent flight tomorrow from the South Lookout. For Monday, they're calling for more clouds than sun with a high in the low 60s and winds south-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it's a really good wind. And if we combine that with a bit of sunshine, hopefully it'll be a really good day and maybe the first day with a good number of broad wings. 
For Tuesday, it's looking cloudy early, then becoming windy with afternoon showers, a high in the upper 40s. Winds will be out of the southwest in the morning and then shifting around more northwest in the afternoon, becoming 20 to 30 miles per hour. So the winds are looking better in the morning when there's that southerly component and they're not quite as strong. So hopefully, if we have a good flight on Monday, that will continue into Tuesday morning. All right. Well, kind of a whirlwind of a day between all of the late night shenanigans and getting to bed late and sleeping in and then the weather being lousy in the morning and then a decent hawk flight kind of being a nice surprise in the afternoon plus a Swainson's hawk. So doesn't get any better than that. That's all part of the experience, I guess. But we got some good days coming up. We're really entering the peak time of the migration. Um, anytime we have south winds coming up, we should start getting pretty good numbers of broad wings. Looks like Monday will be a good day, hopefully continuing into Tuesday. And then next Friday is also possibly looking like a big day as well. So within the next week, we should have some good flights coming up. So I hope to see you soon out at Derby Hill, but only during daylight hours, please. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.